I was going to get a motorbike. And uh, I, I, I met this motor guy. I told him, And then he looked at me. Nilita no boss. Say, eh, kufare mira kujira kachi, nangai. Nilita no boss. I was like, kachi ru tule mera bitan. I was like, ni wika nge boss, na vuga kiviche. You know, uh, do you guys know slums? Do you know slums? Ghetto. You know ghetto? Have you guys lived in Nyamirambo? You know, a space like this, you can have 10 flats in this space with a population of 5,000 people and with one toilet. Now, you know, each and every five minutes, someone is going to come in that what? That toilet. Now, there is a position, a special position you have to take when you are in that what? That toilet, it is this one. is not enough. You have to sing certain songs to tell people you are there. Now there are songs that can help you. A song of knowledge cannot help you. But listen to this song. <laughs> have you guys checked the phones of our celebrities in Rwanda? Check the phone of Jay Poli, the phone of knowledge. You know, when Koshens come in Rwanda and loses his phone, you are going to find their contacts like Beyonce, Jay-Z, Sean Paul, what? But if Jay Poli loses his phone, you are going to find their me to you, Chibagabaga, Uwani Mijikondo, Uza Makachiru. Why don't you be precise? I love the Nigerians. A Nigerian will come with his money, and you know the proof they want to give. There's a lot of swag, eh? So a Nigerian will come. Stop my sister. I go ask you one more question. Uh, you know any place called Ministry here? For example, we assume he's in where? In Chigali, not so. He knows the place, but he wants to ask. Uh -huh. I go ask you one more question. You know, this place they call uh, Ministry. I, I go go there, me, my brother Chinedu. Do you know where Chinedu is? Of course, the lady will go like, well, we just go like this and uh, you find someone asking. Before she goes, eh, uh, eh, uh, sister, are you born again? You know all Nigerians believe they are Christians, eh? Are you born again? I go ask you for one favor. See me. They call Emeka. I go come from Nigeria. Fine, beautiful lady in Kigali. I go to take you around the world using my money. <laughs> he will have the entire currency in the world. He pulls out his wallet. Baby, why is it you call your name? Of course, they go, oh, Umutoni Michelle. Yeah. Your name not be Umutoni now. I'm gonna tonalize you with my money. In Nigeria, so he will get his wallet. Baby, I see your shoe not be old now. This is Canadian dollar. Go buy shoe. Oh my god! Oh, never talk. I never been in now. This is Nigerian Naira. You can go and buy scarf. Are you students? And so, yeah, I'm a sort of Tigari. That's why. My sister, this is pounds. Go buy a laptop. Now, don't do that to a Nigerian lady. You know the men have a lot of swag, eh? So he will give you, give you, give you, give you. The moment he comes to that point of, hey, baby, we go go to bed now. I experience some biology. I you know they can use certain terms. He doesn't want to say the real thing. We go go to bed. Me, I've been a teacher from Nigeria, biology. I go wire you. <laughs> the moment you refuse, one question. Hey, I give you pounds. You never complain about my speed. I give you naira. You never complain about my speed. Now I'm coming to you. If you're a guy from Rwanda to Ghana and you go to Nigeria and you get a beautiful lady, my dear, 
When you have your good money, you work with Nakuma, they've paid you, you work with school, they paid you in Uganda. The moment you give her all the money, all the money, all the money, and I general wants to say, hey, my name is American, I'm pregnant for you now. Was that pregnancy by Bluetooth or infrared? There were three presidents. That was uh, Barack Obama, Saddam Hussein, and our former president, Mze Kibaki. You know Kibaki? They were in an aeroplane going somewhere, I don't know. Now the aeroplane was, the aeroplane was going, then Barack Obama removed his hand outside the plane and said, oh my gosh, we must be in New York. Then he was asked, Obama, how did you know? He said, I just felt the Emperor State Building, the tallest building. Then the aeroplane moved, then Saddam Hussein removed his hand and said, ah, I think you're in Israel. He was asked, how did you know? I just felt the nuclear intensity. I said, oh! Then finally the plane went and reached somewhere. Then our former president Kibaki removed his hand and said, ah, I think we are in Nairobi. He was asked, how did you know? I lost my watch. <laughs> And then their last bone is called Pious Lizard. Those are two reptiles, a mammal, and a gun. My question is, what species is the father? I think the man sits there and says, I think I am crocodile bazooka. <laughs> but it's so good to be back in Chigali. I'm so happy. By the way, the first time I came here, I was a father to be. Right now, I am a three months old father. Yeah. That means 12 months ago, I was. This is a People think comedians, the only thing we do is comedy. Eh, we do other things. And my daughter is very beautiful. You know, she's light skinned. Because the, the, mother, the mother is mixed stress. The mother is half English, half Ugandan. I was looking for quality. <laughs> Let me tell you, I am the lightest thing from Mombokolo. I needed to change the trend. You should do that. Parents, you are responsible for your children's future. You are responsible for your children's future. If you are black, please don't marry a black woman. For the sake of your children. Don't you feel nice? When Nakumat calls your daughter to be part of an advert for Nakumat. Nakumat, hey, the elephant, I'm sure you. Ah. Why do you want the government to use your children on billboards that create awareness for diarrhea? <laughs> you shouldn't allow that. By the way, just to remind you, I am from Mbokolo. That is my village. Our education system is the worst in the world. There's a time a teacher came and asked a student, okay class, if I had three oranges and I put another three oranges, how many oranges would I have? The first student answered, six, said, correct. John, if I had two goats and I added another two goats, how many goats would I have? John put up his hand. Yes, John, he said. Five. 
Teacher said, huh? Five. Okay. John, let me, refer, let me re ask the question. If I had two gods, and I gave another two gods, how many gods would I have? John said, five. Teacher said, what is wrong with you? Okay, if I had two oranges, and I gave another two oranges, how many would those be? John said, four. Then he said, why is it that every time I say two gods, another two gods, you say five? He said, don't I have one goat at home? <laughs> you see, when you have a boss, the only thing you know about your boss is that, you know, they talk about hiring and firing and resigning and what. Oh, wait, bosses are ordinary people. I found that out one day when I went to the toilet. <laughs> I entered one room. Then I had my boss coming in. I knew it was my boss because the sound of his shoe is unique. When he's walking, he does. Even when he's under pressure, he will keep it cool. So he entered the other room. Now, we started. You know, for me, God blessed me with a swag. That one I cannot deny. When I'm on the toilet sitting, I think I'm the one who created the Nokia tune. All you hear when I'm sitting is But my boss, I don't know what he had eaten. Yeah! The man was like a couple snoop song. The guy was like responsibility and the flash <laughs> let me tell you one thing about those modern toilets you bazungu have seen one muzungu here you created this thing called toilets we had our latrines we were very comfortable with our latrines you decided to create those toilets do you know how painful using the toilet is first of all our latrines were so perfect in that when you threw the distance between the bottom and your hole was considerable. In that when you threw, you had to wait for some time. And then you hear, touch. But with the toilet, it's so painful. When you throw, you close your eyes because you know when that thing hits the water, the water comes back for you. When you throw, you know it's only one-way traffic. Unless you are poor in mathematics. You calculate, you throw, the thing goes. But with a toilet, after you throw, you have to confirm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what did I eat? There's even blue. <laughs> now, the king of all problems about toilets is when you flush. Have you noticed when you flush in the toilet, the toilet paper will go, the small pieces will go, the big one will go halfway and come back. Now you're there waiting for the water to refill. And it usually happens when you're in public toilets. There's some of them that don't want knocking. Hello, hurry up. We also want to use the toilet. So you start talking to yourself. You wait also, you let me pass to you. Why are you delayed? That is what happened to my boss because he flashed the first time. Wow! I didn't hear anyone coming out. Kumbe, he was waiting for the water to refill. When it refilled, he flashed. Wow! It went. I had him come out. Now, for me, you know those office toilets? They usually have a hole, eh? a gap. You can see somebody else there. Eh? 
you know there's office toilet. So I told myself, me, let me see the expression on my boss's face. It must be funny. So I went on my list to check. I didn't know that was the exact thing on his mind. He wanted to see which employee was inside wasting time. So as soon as we reached down like this, we met. You know biology, biology was one of our best subjects in school. Because biology they teach real life stuff. Like they can teach you about the human ear. You know the human ear has the eardrum. It has those small, small bits, the bones. It has the hairy glands. It has the esophagus. Okay, that was a long time ago, I can't remember. So that was the hardest part to draw. So one time, we crammed it. We knew every part. This time the teacher surprised us. She came and said, students, you are drawing the female reproductive organ. Eh? Of course, they could not tell us to draw the male one because it's very easy. You draw this microphone. <laughs> At whatever angle, depending on terms and conditions. Then you put a small circle and then some hairs. And you're done. But the female reproductive organ has the fallopian tube, it has the ovaries, it has the uterus, it has that part. It has the small intestine, I think, what, one of those parts. So after 30 minutes, the teacher came and said, Class, Start! There was a guy, for him he didn't even have to read. He was drawing it out of memory. <laughs> he would even ask for a rubber way, so compare. <laughs> <laughs> no, the guy, <laughs> there was one guy. <laughs> Who didn't put on panties. So she was thinking to myself, to herself, my own property. I can't draw. No, no, no. So she decided to copy. Eh, Kumbe, it's like so. Now the girl who put on parties that day, who was unfortunate, said, mm -hmm. looked at the other girl who was copying. Teacher! is copying moreover from the original <laughs> so there was this couple there was so much in love but unfortunately fortunately for the guy unfortunately for the woman the guy got a scholarship to go abroad so that means they were going to be apart for over two years because his scholarship was for two years so the woman was there you know how they talk oh my god i'm going to miss you you know you're going but you know it's going to be painful the guy said i know but there's nothing i can do so time came for the guy to go they used the train now it was a two three-seater train the girl sat sat at the corner there was a guy in the middle and the guy sat on the end then there were three people in the front you know it's a three-seater so as they were going they exchanged seats with the guy in the middle, so they were here busy talking to the man. They were talking to themselves, and the girl told the guy, um, It's so sad we are going, so what are we going to do? I'm going to miss you. The guy said, I don't know. So the girl came up with an idea and said, Oh, you know what? Let's do something crazy. The guy said, What? Let us make love in this train. The guy said, How? That is impossible. How are we going to do that? The girl had a plan. You know, women are very sharp. The girl said, of course, I'll sit on your lap. Ah. The guy said, what about your seat? People will be suspicious. He said, I'll give it to that old man there. So the chief came and sat on his lap. You are. It's my joke, not yours. You see. 
Okay, you see, let me, you be the man and I be the, because I don't think I can control myself. So, because I'm the one who knows the joke, let me do it. So you're the man. See, please. Thank you. Lovely. So, you can't do it. <laughs> Even if you want to see if I would love to turn. Because <laughs> I'm the one with the magic stick. <laughs> this one is crazy. <laughs> anyway, so, the, you know for men, every time a woman says, let's have sex, immediately we... For us, we don't waste time. So the guy was on point. So the chick came and said, Now, you know when you're making love, you have to have action. But if she would do that, people would suspect. But this girl was very bright. Now, the three neighbors who are on the front, she asked the first one, Excuse me, sir, where are you from? <laughs> he said, I'm from Kampala. Oh, from Kampala. Okay, what about you, sir? I'm from Entebbe. Oh, sir, what about you? <laughs> I'm from Ginger. Now, you know, when you're about to climax, the speed has to increase. But this girl had it planned, so she said, oh. So you mean you're from Ginger, and you're from Kampala, and you're from Entebbe, and all of you are going in the same place, and you're doing this? Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sandra, and I'm going to give up Thank you to my sister. Man. 
very inquisitive. One day he saw two bachiga negotiating. One answer said, "You will pay me. I won't pay." You. I'm telling you, you will pay me. I've said I won't pay you. Now this man who was bargaining for his money, he said, "Hey, to show you that I'm not going to pay you, what in the upshafi? To show you that I'm not going to pay you, he got a panga and cut himself, cut his head off and died and said, "Hey." Ah! And this bachiga said, "So you think if you kill yourself, you will take my money?" He cut himself and said, "I will find you." Now I'm imagining I'm also performing. 
Chandra did a video and you can see she's not a gold digger at all. She's not. I wish you would put And she did it so well. She's like, I'm not a gold digger. I can't do those things. First of all, I have pubic hair on my hands. So I can't do those things. At least I have a gold to have my hair. She has someone else's hair. I don't think she knows who it is. And then she's like, I'm not a gold digger. And then she does the breasts, and the breasts are saying, the guys are like, oh, oh. When will the guys ever scream when, my, when I'm on stage singing? So I know I'm risking. I'm risking, I know. But I, no, we love you, but uh, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I'm not single anymore. <laughs> In case he realizes he I want to live with this madness for the rest of his life. So we are there still studying each other. He is black. <laughs> he is black. Believe it or not, I'm very light skinned when I'm standing next to him. You know how these artists have these backdrops behind? When he stands behind me, it's like I'm on stage performing. He's that black. He's very black. Very black. Someone just told, I showed someone a picture of me and that guy said, eh, hey, he looks like a tank going to war. <laughs> he's black and big and bold. But if it were you, you think a nice, cute man would have managed? I need, like, some songs of this world. That, that, you know, those ones. So that, before I begin making fun of you, I'm like, I wonder what you might think about doing. Then I change my mind. And I know some of you are very disappointed, but Panya Rwanda, I told you, you are too handsome. <laughs> too, it's, I'm, not, I'm not complimenting you, it's bad. It's not a good thing, there's nothing to clap about. You're too handsome. I don't want to be the man in the relationship. And then we pass and say, your husband is beautiful. Then me.
I was just hearing earlier when uh, someone backstage was attempting to sing a love song. I mean, I wonder, you guys, things come easier for you. you? Tell someone you love them and everything is okay. You even have bizu. In Ruchika, we don't have things like that. A bizu. Kiss in Ruchika, Nichi. We have a bizu in Ruchika. Do we have it? But Chika, you said to yourself, do you have a kiss in Ruchika? Akuba, our Nyangore, they have Okunyeje. Okay, it sounds like some disease, but yeah, Okunyeje.
I first of all apologize for arriving late. I'm a moderate comer. But my jet, my private jet, got a technical problem. And these people of Air Uganda saved me. So you clap for them. I'm sending you greetings from my sweet wife, Honorable Janet. She has said she loves you so much. I'm not a comedian, but my wife told me I'm funny. When we are in Kampara, I told my OP, His Excellency General Kagame, that I'm going to be in your press. And he told me you should go to Rwanda. So here I am. I first of all congratulate His Excellency General Kagame for his tremendous contribution towards the restoration of peace in Uganda. Clap for that. I knew him from, from Ontario. This is my OP. You know, we had the swag. That, that, that's why I laugh at these people, the, the young boys, when they move with, they, they, they say they are moving with swag. We had our swag in Ontario. While in Ontario, I told, I used to call Jeno Kagame a man of Akachiro. Because he was a very intelligent man. If we are movie actors, we would have been called the expendables. <laughs> but of, of, of course, me as a member. <laughs> because he also helped me so much in fighting against those people. Uganda and Rwanda are in separate countries. I think when God was creating us, he first ate breakfast. <laughs> That's the reason why um, uh, our letters, we share some letters like Rita K. Eh? I'm called Kakuta, he's called Kagame. Our capital state is called Kampara. Yours is called Chikari. Ah. Our, we have got the most beautiful first ladies. Mine is called Janet. We, we also have Madame Janet. But we are some people who have got Rita K, and they are also think they are great. In Uganda, I have Kisa, basically. <laughs> huh? I don't know yours. <laughs> huh? That's not part of my life. When I was coming, there are some people who told me, where is Joseph Kuni? 
We kicked Kony out of Uganda. And we went to Central African Republic. I told Kony, if he doesn't surrender, he will come back horizontally. <laughs> Not fat curry. And you know what that means. Uh, because I'm not a joking subject. I don't want to know. Democrat. This other one. That's why I'm a talented man. I started my music career in Ntare. Toshamuka. In Ntare, I used to sing bass. That's where I came up with the idea of another rap. You want another rap? Unfortunately, I didn't come with my twin dancers. <laughs> I left them in Uganda. But I'm going to release another album under Phenom Records in Uganda. I'm not like this baby who that's not singing, they are shouting. Now, I know you are asking yourselves questions. When are you retiring? <laughs> retiring for what? <laughs> yeah? Some of you are comparing to the former South African president, Nelson Mandela. But yes, there is no big deal. He went to prison for 27 years. I've also ruled for 27 years. <laughs> he ruled for five years. I fought in war for five years. But any time I'm going to retire, that's when Jesus comes back. <laughs> because in Charimbo, that's why my wife calls me baby face. In China, stamina machine.